Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to let's walk through this. Make sure we feel good about it. Uh, it looks like most of you tried it, which is great. Um, so the first three, we're just finding the slope. So it's literally just labeling x1, y1, x2, y2. Obviously, keeping the x1 and the y1 together, and x2 and y2. Don't ever label it x1, y2, and x2, y1, because you'll get it incorrect. <clears throat> so the slope on the first one looks like uh, 4 over negative 3. You could have it as negative 4 over 3 <coughs> as well. Excuse me. Uh, number 2 looks like it came out to 1 fifth. Number 3 came out to negative 5 over 4. So I just want to pause there and make sure you feel comfortable with how I got those answers. If you didn't reduce, you're okay. If you didn't reduce, good. And then if you had the negative on the bottom versus on top, that's still correct. No, I mean, I thought we were supposed to do the slope and decimal. No, don't ever have slope and decimal, please. Because, and the, this is why. Because slope, the numerator, tells you to go up or down. The bottom number tells you to go right or left. And if you had the decimal, if you had like 1.2, you're not quite sure, you know, a lot of people can't convert that as a fraction. So I would strongly encourage you to stay with it being a fraction. Yeah? Oh, we're not there yet. We're okay, though, on those first three? Okay, so let me, I'm going to walk through the next ones. Um, so for the equation, so the thing is, on each of these, I recognized the y-intercept which is b, and that goes into y equals mx plus b. And then what I did is I either counted up and right or down and right. If I count up and right, that's positive. If I count down and right, that's negative. OK, so my b value here is 1. And realize this is point, so I went down 1, right 2. So my slope is negative half because I went from here to here. I had to go down and right, so that would take place there. Number 5, though. I have it crossing at 0, 0, so my b value is 0. And if you look at it, it looks like it goes up 3, right 2. Up and right is positive, so m is 3 over 2. So y equals 3 halves x plus 0, or you could have written it as y equals 3 halves x. Summers, what you have different? I had a, um, I found a, um, another point at the bottom left. Okay. So instead, I went down 3 and over 2 to the right. So oh, I like that. Over. And I'm going to tell you why it worked. Okay, down is negative, right is positive. Down is negative, left is negative. Negative over negative is? Got that? It's a great point. I like that. Okay, uh, number six looks like it crosses negative two, so my b value is negative two. And then if I count, I had found a point here that looked like it existed, so I went down one from here and right three to get to here. That was my map to get there, so remember my slope's my map. Uh, B and I went down and right, that's negative, so y equals negative one-third, negative one-third x minus two. <clears throat> Problem number seven, it looks like it crosses the y-intercept at negative one. And from there, I counted up four and right three to get to this point. And my grids didn't come out as nicely. Yours should have stayed nice on your paper so you could see where it definitely crosses. So I have a slope of 4 thirds, and then I have it plus negative. I guess I could have reduced it, made it y equals 4 thirds x minus 1. So plus negative is still fine. And then number 8, it looks like I crossed at 3, so my b value is 3. I went down and right, which is negative and positive. So I had a slope of negative 1 over 1. So y equals negative x plus 3. Problem number 9, it uh, looks like I crossed at 1. And I counted up 3, right 4, which is positive, so y equals 3 fourths x plus 1. Are there any questions on those? Okay, so those were when I definitely knew the y-intercept. I definitely saw it cross the y-intercept. But there is a time that you might not always be able to see that, which will be a process of events in order to take place, where you find the slope first, you can plug into either the point-slope equation, which we haven't really gone over yet, or you could plug into slope-intercept, which we have, y equals mx plus b. But there's different ways to go about it. Okay? Um, that's what we got. Are we okay, okay? Okay, okay. I'm now repeating myself. All right, so 10 through 18, 
We wanted to identify the slope and the y-intercept, so we mainly need to make sure they are equal to y. Uh, so the slope of number one is four, or you could write four over one, and the y-intercept is negative five. Problem number two, realize they have two-thirds minus x, so they're backwards from each other. So the x, whatever is attached to the x term is the slope. Whatever doesn't have a letter attached to it is the y-intercept. So my slope of number 11 is negative one. My slope is two-thirds. Oh, wait, my slope is negative one. My y-intercept is two-thirds, excuse me. Uh, number 12, looks like my slope is five over two, and my y-intercept is negative 19 over eight. Number 13, again, they have it written backwards, so you just have to realize that my constant, the term that doesn't have an x attached is the y-intercept, so b equals 11, slope is 2 thirds. Um, even though I have y on the right side, everything else on the left side, it still could be done. Um, it's his solve for y, is just flip-flop. So I have a slope of negative 9 over 2, and I have a y-intercept of 6. And then number 15, a little trick on this one. I have x equals 5. x equals 5. If you have x equals a number, it's a vertical line. A vertical line has an undefined slope. Remember we talked about yesterday, vertical and undefined. U and V are both real close to each other. That's how you remember that. Okay. Um, if you have a vertical line, it's not going to cross the y-axis at all. So, but nope. I don't know if that's actually the official term, but I like it. Number 16, I need to make sure I solve for y before I start identifying the y-axis. And uh, we're across the y-axis and the slope. So if I solve it, I wind up with y equals negative four fifths x plus four. So I find that my slope is negative four fifths and my y-intercept is four. Uh, y equals negative three. That's a horizontal line at negative three. So across the y-axis at negative three, it does not have a slope. The slope is zero. Okay. Number eighteen, we have to solve for y. We wind up with y equals 4x minus 3. So we have a slope of 4 and a y axis crossing or a b value of negative 3. Are we okay on up through 18? Any questions? All right. 19 through 26. So slope of 2, y-intercept of 7, so m is 2, b is negative 7, so just plug in the y equals mx plus b, so y equals 2x minus 7. Uh, they give us b and m, so you just plug those in, so you get y equals negative 5x plus 4. If they have a slope of 3 fifths and it goes to a point 0, negative 2, what is 0, negative 2? It's where it crosses what? The y-axis, so my b value on that happens to be negative 2. So I get y equals 3 fifths x minus 2. Number 22, uh, 0, 3 is where it crosses the y-axis as well. So b equals 3 there. So y equals negative 4 sevenths x plus 3. Yup. Isn't 0, negative 2 not in? I don't know. Zero, 0, means it didn't go right or left at all. And I just went down 2. So that's my way across the y-axis. That make sense? Yeah. So the 0, negative 2, and the 0, 3 are both way across the y-axis. That's a little different than if it was just a point. Uh, it goes to the point negative 5, 6 with a slope of 0. So on number 23, this is one of those, and we can work these out. 23 and 24 and 25. 23, 24, 25, I can work out on a separate sheet of paper or a separate screen. And uh, I can do that no problem for you guys. Um, undefined slope. So undefined slope means it has to be x equals a number. So I have to look at the point 4. So x equals 4. Undefined slope, it's not y equals. It's a vertical line. And again, I'll work 23, 24, and 25 out in a sec. And then number 27, the slope is 3 fourths. Uh, Y-intercept is negative 3. So if I plot negative 3 down here, and I go up 3, right 4, that finds me a second point. So that's what number 27 looks like. Number 28, uh, the slope is negative 5 thirds. The y-intercept is 4. So 4, and I go down 5, right 3. So that's what number 28 looks like. Number 29, uh, it doesn't have a, uh, a b value in there. So my y-intercept is 0. My slope is 2 fifths, so 0, 0. And then I go up 2, right 5. And that's how those work out. OK, can I work out those? Other three problems for you? 
I'm sure you feel good about it. And again, it's sometimes a little bit of a process, but you know, a lot of the thought process that takes place with these really does go far away for you. Okay. Reduce, reduce. So problem number 23, they give us a point of this, and they give us a slope of 0. Okay, what am I going to plug things into? Which equation? What are we going to use? Y equals mx plus b. So this is an x value, this is a y value, still with me? I have an m value, so I get 6 is equal to 0 times negative 5 plus b. What does this answer come out to? That becomes 0. So 0 is equal to b. Okay? So my slope is this, that's that. So y equals mx plus b. What's 0 times x? 0. 0 plus 6 is just 6. So that's what number 23 would look like. So again, we're utilizing y equals mx plus b. We're using it. We're identifying the x and y value. And in this case, the slope, we're plugging them in. 24. Is that clear? We have a slope and we have a point. Now there's an equation called point slope that we'll, we'll get to learning. But right now we just know to use this equation. So this is x, this is y. Oops. Yeah. Get out of there. Uh, damn. Yeah, man. Still highlighted, but we'll pretend it's not. All right, so I have four. My computer hates me. Close the window. It does. All right, so y is 4. y is 4. m is 2 over 3. x is 3. I don't know what b is. What's 2 thirds of 3? 6 thirds, which just comes out to 2. 2. So 2 is equal to b or b equals 2. Now I can plug it back into my equation. So y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. Let's see if we can make this work all the way. So we have m equals negative 1, and we have this as a point. So again, I can use y equals mx plus b. So that's an x value, that's a y value. value is 13, so we'll plug it in here and here. <clears throat> Preston, don't give me any more of those stickers, man. I'm choking on it. I should have told you I have a severe peanut allergy. I'm just kidding. Well, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Dang dog, the teacher's dead. <laughs> okay, are we okay with the assignment? <clears throat> Feel all right? Tired? Huh. 
One of the other F words in math. Functions. What the functions? <laughs> I would like to say that too, but unfortunately I wouldn't get function out because I don't know, I'm slow these days. All right, so the concept of a function. So let me show you a few things that a function is. If I graph it, this, if I graph it, is a function. This is also a function. This is also a function. Let me show you a few things that aren't functions. Vertical lines. A sideways parabola. Cycle. Alright. So these are functions and these are not. So let's talk about what defines a function and what doesn't. So those are just a couple of pictures of what functions look like. Still with me? Alright, so let's just warm up. Let's graph. Um who should we pick on? I'm going to pick on George. Sorry, George. George, I need you to pick anybody you want that I call on. You got the power. Steve. Steve. Steve, what is the y-intercept of number one? Mm -hmm. cross the y-axis. So remember, y equals mx plus b, negative 3, good. I said now 1, 2, negative 3. Still with me? Shh. Steve, pick someone. George, okay. George. What is the slope of this? What's that? I already used the negative 3. What's the other number? 2. Now, let me ask you this. Crystal, is the slope a point? You're saying yes. I'm staring at you, waiting for you to change your answer. No, because the slope is like a map to find another point. So watch this. So this it means 2 over 1, which means from this point I'm going to go up 2, right 1. So notice it was a map to find another point, and this is what this looks like. Now I talked about back here, <coughs> functions versus not. Is that what I have graphed right now a function? Yes. Yeah. Sounds good. Feels good. Still not quite sure what a function is, but I know this looks kind of like one of the pictures you drew originally. I said it was a function, therefore this must be a function. All right. George, who am I picking on next? Angelo, what's my y-intercept of this next one? Number two. Five, good. So I'm going to come up here. One, two, three, four, five. Angelo, pick me somebody. Go oh, back. Back, what is my slope of this next one? Negative one half. So from this point, and oh, is the slope a point? No, it's a map to find another point, right? Right, Crystal? So down one, right two. Now we talked about on the last board what functions were. Does that appear to be a function as well? Yes. I think so. I, what, which line was not a function? What did I used to call it? Vertical. vertical line. And neither of those are vertical lines. So I'd say pretty much all lines are functions unless they are vertical. I think that might have been a nice process for us. Can I move on? <coughs> All right, so we have a relation, we have a function, we have a vertical line test, we have a domain, the range, and a t-table, t-chart. Oh my goodness, all kinds of information up here. Okay, so a relation is just like having an x and y value. So let me write a relation up here. Okay, that right there is a relation. That's a relation. It's an x that leads to a y value. An x that leads to a y value. 
Seem okay? Yeah. I will tell you that a function is x and y, and a function has to look like this. That right there is a function. It's also a relation. I will tell you that this particular relation right here, this is not a function. I have my x value repeat. Okay? This doesn't have the x value repeat. The y value could repeat. Okay? So the vertical line test is this. Okay? So a relation is a component x to y, x to y, x to y. Meaning, like if you plugged into an equation with an x value, you can get a y value out. You have an input, you can get an output. Input is the same thing as domain, output is the same thing as range. So the vertical line test means if I can take a picture and draw a vertical line, millions of them, trillions of them, infinite of them, and it only touches our line once, it's a, it is a function. So why would a circle not pass the vertical line test? Matt. Right. So if I drew a vertical line, now I can draw a vertical line out here, and it passes it, right? But if I drew a vertical line here, it intersects it twice. If you draw a vertical line and it intersects your picture twice, it's not a function. Why is that? The x value repeats. Hmm. So if the x value repeats in a whole string of data, or if I draw a vertical line that touches our graph twice, it's not a function. Vertical line test is pretty easy. So the domain. The domain, domain are the x values. In order for the domain to create a function, the x values don't repeat. If they don't repeat, that means the vertical line test, when drawn on the picture, will touch it no more than once. Okay. Now the range are the y values. The range, they can they can repeat. They don't have to. The y value can repeat all day long, and it's still going to be a function. The y value repeating all day long is like the line y equals four. Why y, y equals four is a horizontal line. Horizontal line. If I draw a vertical lines through it, does it touch it more than once? No. So my range. So a t table chart. You guys have all done these t-tables. You have x comma y. You have something here, you get something here. Okay? If you make a t-chart and the x values repeat, and they give you different values, that means you're not going to have a function. Okay, let's, can I move off this? This is more definite. I think this is by doing it's going to work. Okay. So we have a mapping diagram. For each of the following examples, use a given relation values to fill out other representations. Identify whether a relation is a function of state y. Okay. Um, so this first one, I know one of the values is negative 5, 0. And then I have negative 2, 1. Or negative 1, excuse me. And then I have 0, negative 3. And then I have 3, 4. And then I have 4, 4. By definition, is that a relation right now? What was the relation? X and Y values, right? So is that a relation? Yeah. Is it a function, though? Do any of the x values repeat? I have yes. 3, I have negative 5, I have negative 2, I have 0, and I have 4. Are any of the x values repeating? Yes. X values. No. No. Function. Function. Let's take a look. Let's draw this. Three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Still with me? If I draw a vertical line through that, it only touches once, yes? Negative 5, 0. If I draw a vertical line, it touches only once. Yes. Oh, negative 2, negative 1. Draw a vertical line, it only touches once. 0, negative 3. Draw a vertical line, only touches each point once. Four comma four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Draw a vertical line, only touches once. But they're the same y value. So, vertical line test. I could take vertical lines, draw all day long, and it only touches. Let's just pretend I can draw a really good vertical line. Only touches once. So, that relation is a function. Our relation is x to y, x comma y. Input to output, domain comma range, a function, the x values can't repeat. The domain can't repeat. Okay? So, ordered pairs, right here. T table, oh, I could have filled out this table with 3, negative 5, negative 2, 0, 4, 4, 0, negative 1, negative 3, negative, and 4. Plug them in. Ordered pairs we have up there. The domain is 3, negative 5, negative 2, 0, 4. The range, 4, 0, negative 1, negative 3, 4. Function, yes. Why? The domain doesn't repeat. Why? The vertical line test passes. Why? Oh, I like this. This is a good lecture. Good stuff. You guys can throw money later. No applause. Example two. Just looking at it, does it appear to be a function? Yes. No. No. No, why not? Because it doesn't touch once. Yeah. So this works, but this one doesn't. Because it touched twice. Okay, if I wanted to map it, I'd have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative four goes to one, two, three. Positive three. And then I have negative 2, and that goes to 1. And then I have negative 2 again, goes to negative 2. And then I have right there, that's 1 to 0. And then I have 3 to 2. See this right here? That's used twice. That's used twice. If the input is used twice, if the domain is used twice, it's not a function. T table, can I make a T table? Sure. Fill that out just the same way this. Ordered pairs, make the ordered pairs. Domain, negative 4, negative 2, 1, 3. Range, 3, 1, negative 2, 0, 2. Function, no. Why? Vertical line test didn't pass. Why? The domain repeated. Why? There's two x values, they're the exact same. Huh. Good lesson. Ooh, ordered pairs. Take a look here. Do any of those x values repeat? Yes. yes. Which one? Two. Those repeat. Function? No. no. Why not? X value repeats. If I graph this, if I graph this, 2, 5, oh, 2, 5 up there, and 2, 6 up there, vertical line test doesn't pass. Okay, table, sure. Negative 2, 5, 4, 3, 2, 5, 3, and 1, 2, 6. Mapping it. Negative 2 goes to 5. Woohoo! 4 goes to 3. Woohoo! 2 goes to 5. Woohoo! 3 goes to, uh, 2 also goes to 6. Woohoo! And 3 goes to negative 1. Yeah, domain. That's my domain. Range, that's my range. Function, no. Why? Vertical line test didn't pass. Why? Domain repeated. Why? X values repeated. Why? Why? Dude, don't start packing up yet. We're not done. We're almost done. Um, create your own function. Gage, give me an ordered pair that is from negative 5 to positive 5 in both the X and Y direction. Uh, 4, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4. I like it. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. So we got 4 going to 4. All right. 
Crystal, give me another ordered pair between negative 5 and positive 5. That doesn't have a 4 as the x value. Negative 5 and what? Negative 5, negative 5, okay. So negative 5 goes to negative 5. God bless you. George, give me an ordered pair between negative 5 and positive 5. Negative 3? Negative 2? Negative 3. Negative 2. Hey, is this a function? Yes. yes. Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes. yes. Does the domain repeat? No. no. Wow, the x is don't. So ju justified? Yes, we can justify that. Vertical line test. That's total right there, function. Boom. Is 2x plus 3 a function? Hang on, hang on. Is 2x plus 3 a function? So my y-intercept's 3, up 2, right 1. Is this a function? Yes. yes. Vertical line test all day long touches once. Okay? What kind of line is not a function? Vertical line. And that means the x values are repeating over and over. A vertical line is x equals a number. What we got there? Do you guys know how to substitute in? Yes. Okay. Do you know how to make a table? Yeah, you plug in. Negative 2 gets plugged in, I get negative 7. Negative 1 gets plugged in, I get negative 6. 0, negative 5. Negative 4. Negative 3. Graph it. Okay, pretty easy. Heart rate. Uh, okay, we're okay with that. Based on this, look for those. You guys and girls, homework is cake walks tonight. You guys like cake? Yes. Yeah, you like to walk? All right. Number 5A. Number 5A. Worksheet 5A, which is page 82, 83. Page 82, 83. This will be marked off next time. Guys and girls, cool lecture. I like that. That's some good stuff. One history, business, and math in one class. Dude.